Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review of Married at First Sight Season 13, Episode 16 called Weighing the Decision. So not really much happened this episode. Everybody talking about they don't know what they're going to do for Decision Day, even though we all know what they're probably going to do for Decision Day. But we're going to try to get through this episode, even though there wasn't much to give. Gil and Marilla, they baking some cookies and we're reading the vows. Okay, whatever. Jose is telling Rachel that he will take a bullet for her because she asked him, like, would you take a bullet for me? Because in the beginning of the season, he said no. He, he would do it for his mama, but he wouldn't do it for her. But I guess now he's saying he would do it for her. And I'm just like, sure, okay, fine, whatever you say, whatever, you know, Jose. So this episode, since it's like the episode before Decision Day, all the people meeting with their friends and family to discuss about what they should or shouldn't do or what you know how they're thinking in regards to decision day so we start off with ryan he's playing tennis with his friend and in my head i'm just like what does ryan not do outside outdoor activity wise so ryan admits that you know relationships in his past ended because of him essentially uh, the friend kind of makes little jokes about it, but in reality, the friend did admit in the confessional that Ryan's a person who has a difficulty with communication. He's not a good communicator, and he needs someone who's going to call him out on his BS. And I'm just like, well, Brett tried to kind of do that, even though Brett doesn't seem like a person who's a good communi communicator either, either, whatever, <laughs> but she tried to call him out, and he's still not really taking accountability for his faults it seems like he takes accountability when he talks with someone else but not with the person he needs to discuss that with so you know ryan's friend you know that's cute i think his name was michael you know that's cute that you're trying to you know peep game and let us know but at this point it's a couple of days before decision day like we don't care like this episode i'm just like i, I really don't care at this point um uh, but when they sit down after the tennis, Ryan says that he does feel ashamed of himself for, you know, getting caught in the app. And and I'm just like, okay, Ryan, listen, you should have said that when you got caught. So my thing is, are you sorry that you did it or are you just sorry because the fact that you got caught? That That's two different things, Ryan. So I don't know. What, whatever. Okay. He thought about he don't know what he's going to do for decision day. Ryan, we know. You know, your family know, all of America knows. You don't say no. And if you don't say no on decision day, that's going to throw us for a loop. If any of these couples say yes on decision decision day, other than Jose and Rachel, from what I hear, I'm going to be surprised. Nobody should be saying yes, to be honest, on decision day with all these five couples. But I'm just going based off of what the TV shows me because we're going to get into the previews for next week for decision day. So, I um, you know, no. we get on, move on to Michaela. She's sitting down with her sister, Sharifa. Uh, Sharifa came to visit Michaela, and Michaela talking about how her sister wants her and Zach, Zakayla, to work out. And I'm just like, because you probably tell her lies. Because if uh, Sharifa don't see what done happened, she probably just like, no, nah, y'all don't need to be get, be together. But... In the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, like, she probably just don't want to deal with your ass, Michaela. She's like, oh, that's Zach's problem. Nah, honey, that's not my problem. No more. But uh, Michaela does sit down with her sister and tells her, tells her, you know, everything that done happened between her and Zach. And, you know, how I guess they spent the night together the night prior or whatever after speaking with um Dr. Pepper. And... Uh, Sharifa's just like, oh, child, that's your husband. And, mm, that's your husband. Y'all just need to work it out, honey. And I'm just like, no, they don't. They just being sneaky links at this point that, you know, coincidentally are legally buying together through marriage contract. Other than that, they don't need to be together. They don't even need to be together for sneaky link purposes just because of the fact that all the little stupid issue, immature issues that don't happen through this season, they need to go figure themselves out first with a therapist and then maybe pursue other people, okay? Um, but Michaela, she's still trying to figure out what she's trying to do. That, that's all, everybody trying to figure out what they're trying to do. But that was with her and her sister. We move on about with her friend. Bow stole her because of trifling Sarah and... 
you know, my question is, why the hell are you still calling her your best friend, pal? That's not your best friend, because if your best friend is willing to do something, that's not your best friend, pal. She proved that to you in this instance. So I don't know why she's still calling her her best friend or whatnot. I'm surprised you, you didn't call Sarah yet to cuss her ass out uh, for that trifling ass shit. Uh, the, even the friend was just like, yeah, like, why would she do something like that? Because she trifling. Probably because she want to fuck Johnny if she didn't if she didn't fuck Johnny already. Probably because she jealous because, you know, everybody about to know who Bao is and they don't know who Sarah is. So she had to make a name for herself. Some people just like the attention, just to like the attention. And I'm not saying that's what it is. But, you know, fuck Sarah at this point. So I'm going to say what I want to say. <laughs> but, um, listen, Sarah ain't shit. I said that last week. I'm saying this this week. Sarah ain't shit. Um, but... The friend said something about cons outweighing the pros. And Bao lets us know, and the friend, that she's willing to work things out if Johnny says yes on decision day and wants to fight for the marriage. And I'm like, why is it? What the? How many times does this nigga got to, like, tell you about yourself? Talk shit to you, to your face. Before you're just like, I'm done. What happened to the episodes ago where you just like, you know, I seen the way my mom was with, with my, was with how she was with my dad. And I promised myself I will never be that person. And I see that I'm, I was becoming that person for Johnny. And I can't do that no more. And even when you showed him where you used to live at, you was like, he doesn't deserve to see where I used to live at. He doesn't deserve this. But now you're saying if he's willing to work things out and become better, that you will Why about? For Why? A nigga who told you to your face that he didn't like you. He didn't like you back then. So why do you think he's going to like you now, 15 years later? No. I know y'all technically married, but... So? There's so much disrespect you can handle. Like I said, I'm a person. Listen, you don't even like me? We can't... I'm not talking to you. There ain't no more us just because we legally married. No. I'm moving forward. And I hope Bao move forward too with Zach's ass at this point. Move on to Rachel. She's sitting down with her little trifling best friend who was talking shit in the beginning of the season. And like everybody else, she doesn't know she could put up with uh, Jose because, you know, there's some cons. There's pros, but there's cons. So she don't know if she could put up with him listening, with him not listening. Let me correct myself. With him not listening or his blow ups like the night that he put her out. So the friend is just like, she says something. And clearly, we can see that the friend's not feeling Jose. And I'm just like, okay, well, neither does America. So, we, at least we on the same page with that. I forgot her name. Uh, but, listen, Rachel, you decided to move forward with him after that whole incident, days later. Without him, like, really apologizing to you in the first place. So, something that you had to force out of him. You had to force an apology out of Jose. So, the fact that you're willingly going back with this guy... And you had to force the apology out of him. Not him willing to apologize. Not even the day after when he was able to calm down and, you know, sleep in peace in his bed because he secured his property. Because he secures his property every night before he goes to sleep. So the fact that you stayed with him, you talking about, you know, she don't know if she could put up with that. Uh, Rachel, listen, either you in or you out, girl, because... I'm not going to keep defending with, you know, you and, whole, you know, for her day and all that stuff if you're going to stay with him. And I feel like you stay with him from what I hear in the streets. So, um, listen, that's your, that's your choice, girl. I'm, there's only so much defending I can do on here if, you know, I, I no, whatever. You, you, listen, your friend ain't feeling him. America ain't, America ain't feeling him. I ain't feeling him. But you feeling him, obviously, because, you know. Something must be good, you know. He he don't even want to go out of the uh state with your ass. We're gonna talk about that later though. So we'll move on to Marilla. She's sitting with her friend. She's saying she loves that Gil is patient with her because she's a lot a lot to handle. She's a handful. We know that Marilla. We that's that's facts. Um uh, but you know the finances you know, it concerns her because he doesn't have a savings in America. And uh, he doesn't have an established career because I guess he just started in the firefighting 
industry and whatnot. So she's just a little concerned, you know. And I can understand her concern about that. But, you know, it depends. Does the pros outweigh those things? Or does the con, you know, you got to figure out what's best for you. Like, at this, at this point, like I said, I, I'm still not too fond of Marilla. Like I said, still to this day, in my head, we can't be friends. But um, I could understand her concerns and just from her financial aspect, you know, it's going to be hard to live your life with a nigga who's going to downplay you and keep saying, like, listen, you know, why you got to do this? Why you got to do that? Because I, I got the money, nigga. Like, sorry that you don't. I'm not saying nothing about you don't have the money, but, like, I, I if I want to go buy some Chanel Number no. 9 drink from a, a, a restaurant, I'm going to go buy the Chanel Number no. 9 drink from the restaurant. You know, I'm paying for what my money. What's the problem? But I'm going to get into, you know, Gil's concerns later on in the episode. So, you know, it is, you know, but from this moment, before I saw Gil's scene with his mom, I'm just like, you know, Mila, that's, you going to do what you're going to have to do. That's it. Moving on to Jose, he sits down with his friend, and uh, I guess he first tries to say everything's perfect, but then the friend asks um, Jose, what are the cons with being with Rachel? And he's just like, faithful, communication, the fact that she called him another nigga's name, or like his cons of her. So... Uh, Jose explains to his friend about how Rachel slept at her ex's house the night that, you know, he accidentally kicked her out or whatnot. And the friend sees that as red flags. He didn't say that, you know, word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. But, you know, the friend's just like, he sees that as a red flag, but encourages Jose to continue to do better. You know, you know, they always be trying to keep them on the straight and narrow to probably work things out since they're married, so to speak. So... Jose got a lot to think about, just like everybody else in this damn cast. So we move on to Johnny. He's sitting down with his, two of his friends. I guess they were his groomsmen or best men from the wedding. And he Johnny explains to them that it started going south since the honeymoon. And just him talking, I can see his face getting red. And I'm just like, Johnny, you know, you get red a lot. I mean, I want to get that checked out. But, um... So he says, seeing how Bao grew up when he went with her to go to the place where her trailer was, uh, he just wants to take care of. He just wants to take care of her. So it made him think about it a lot, and you know he kind of is conflicted now because you know one part of him is saying like just leave her ass because she annoying as fuck and stuff, but then another part of him is just like, listen, she's been through a lot. She she needs you, you know, me to take care of her the way she needs to be treated or something. I don't know. So he's conflicted. And I love that his well, one of his friends said in the confessional that Johnny's vision of what he wants uh, is not, it's going to be hard to find. No, Johnny's vision of what he wants, friend, he ain't going to find because a vision of what Johnny wants, that vision ain't going to want Johnny's ass. I already said that before. I'm saying it. they don't want his ass, so he ain't going to get it. Um, but their friends encourage him uh, that maybe staying with Bao is what's best for him. Because, you know, being with someone can make you a, a better person. And I'm just like, no, Johnny needs to leave. It's too late. Sorry, you already done that. It's too late. He need to go. And Johnny doesn't know what he wants to do. But he does um, admit in the confessional that his friends are people that could convince them to, to buy timeshare if they could because they're just so good at their words and whatnot. And I'm just like, even if they are, no, you don't, you, you, you can leave, Johnny. You, you could go. The door's right there. You, you could leave. So we move on to Gil and Zach. They stop talking, sitting down together, you know, sipping wine and whatnot. And Zach lets us know that Michaela missed that she got issues. Uh... But Zach knows that she's in it for the right reasons and says that they're on speaking terms. And I'm just like, you know, that's nice of you, Zach, to speak so positively of Michaela and stuff. But um, this is not just a Michaela issue. You also got things to work on, Zach. I get that she be doing a lot of crazy things, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that she's finally coming to terms that she's crazy. She's not saying that word for word. I'm just paraphrasing. She understands she got things to work on. A lot of things to work on, actually. But 
Listen, y'all don't need to be together either. Y'all toxic as fuck. So you guys don't even need to be together. And Zach, you need help too. Not just Michaela, Zach, you need to talk to somebody too. Okay, I'm surprised you didn't cry on this episode. So, you know, he don't know what he gonna do. No one does. No one does. Anyway, we move on to Brett. Brett lets us know Ryan completely moved out ever since he got caught on that dating app. And Brett's sister calls her, so she talks to her sister over the phone. And Brett's letting us know Ryan can't take no type of responsibility and none of that. But the sister was being 100% straight up with Brett. And the sister actually said the same thing my husband said at the same time, saying he don't care. He don't give a fuck. If he did care, he probably would have put more effort. But he don't care. He been didn't care ever since the honeymoon. So, uh, Brett, you, you know, hoorah for you for trying to be kind of buck in, the, in this situation and instance. But at the same time, it's like, Brett, listen, girl. Uh, there was things you could have done, too. It's not just on Ryan's fault. Now, he trifling. Don't get me wrong. I understand he traveled for being on that app and all that stuff and not trying and putting forth the effort. But at the same time, you you kind of approved, bro. I, I've been saying this, you know, earlier in the season, but like you kind of approved. That doesn't give him the, you know, that doesn't give him any leeway in his doings. But at the same time, Brett, you know, you could communicate better too. So you also are not good at communicating. And you like to uh, kind of beat around the bush, so to speak. So I can see in this episode, like, you are definitely fed up and ready to move forward and on with your life. And that's good. But take this as a lesson for yourself to change and be better for your next relationship that you get into. Um, what else they said? So her sister said he don't care. Brad is still talking about he's not ready for marriage and stuff and... You know, because he didn't get what he ordered, he checked out, she's over. And I'm just like, okay, yes, Brett, you are right. I, I give that to you by the same time. Listen, you got to work on yourself, too, to better yourself, too. Like, you called him out when it was already too late. He don't give like, come on, girl, bye. We move on to Rachel and Jose. They go out to dinner. And Jose realizes there's a lot of things that he needs to work on. And he doesn't agree with the YOLO life. Rachel... Wants to still live life with her husband. And she set a very great compromise. Her compromise, excuse me, is she wants to do one big trip every other year. And still do little side trips too, you know, for what Jose wants. Because, you know, he likes to do little road trips because he doesn't want to spend money. And Jose even said, you know, I still want to do the road trips driving through San Antonio or whatever. And Rachel's just disappointed because she didn't say word for word. I'm just paraphrasing that she's like willing to compromise and he's not willing at all. So that, you know, kind of disappoints her. And I'm just like, Rachel, listen, I'm going to give it to you in this scene because I don't know what Jose talking about. One big trip every other year. That's like a nine or 10 hour flight. That's definitely clearly not in the United States of America. What is wrong with that? That doesn't seem like a bad compromise. She's not even saying every year, nigga. Every other year. So you got two years, 24 months to save up, to move forward. Like, nigga, he got, what, 81000 or something from his little whiteboard of savings? Technically, you could just go right now if he wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So I don't... Jose, at this point, you just being difficult just to be difficult. Because he even says um, his family grew up poor and whatnot. So he's definitely in a position, I guess, where he's just like, don't don't spend because that way you will continue to have money. And I get it because I know a lot of Haitians that are like that also. But at the same time, you having all this money for a rainy day, yes, that's good. But at the same time, you're not supposed to diminish and not live life because of the fact that you're always concerned about when the next rainy day is going to come, then you're just always going to be one of those people that's just waiting for doomsday. Like, that's how you want to live your life? What about when you have kids and the kids say, oh, daddy, I want to go to Disney World or Disneyland. Like, so you're just going to be like, no, kids, we could find uh, like Six Flags in Texas. No, nah, man, like, come on, dot. But, you know, that's how Jose going to be Jose-ing. Uh, 
<laughs> a reviewer I watch says that, but uh, yeah, Jose, listen, no, bro, I'm I'm not gonna sit here, especially nor when Rachel be talking about oh summer Rachel and shit. Like, so you gonna do a road trip around Texas? That's that, that's it. The fact like it just annoys me because Rachel compromised because first she was talking about she took a trip like every month. And took a big trip every year, spending credit cards on her trips to Europe and shit. And she compromised with your ass to say every other year. Not even every year. That, to me, was like a big compromise for Rachel. And I'm like, Rachel, you growing, girl. I appreciate you. You mature. Okay, girl. And for Jose to just kind of be like, yeah, nah. It's still, it's still not going to be that. Nah, I don't think so. Nigga, bye. We move on to uh, Gil and Merla. They go roller skating. Mirla's like, is this a workout? Am I losing? Are we, like, losing calories for this? And Gil's just like, girl, stop. Like, you burning calories whenever you complain. And I'm just like, yeah, listen. I did laugh. I did laugh. That was funny to me. But at the same time, girl, what we're not going to do is continuously talk about this shit. Okay? So, they sit down to talk. And Gil saying finances are the issue, the main issue between them. And... He tells Marilyn like he feels like that she shits on people and the people who don't have what she has, you know, she shits on them and she acts like a brat and she's spoiled. Marilyn disagrees and Gil said if the lavish lifestyle is all she cares about, then she's not the person for him. And I'm just like, okay, Gil, if that's how you feel, then you need to leave too because um, I'm, I mean, it's the end of the season anyway. But I'm pretty sure she's tired of you complaining of the, about how she's a princess and stuff. Listen, if you can't handle that, because she even says she's a lot to handle, you need to get up and bounce. And same thing for you, Mirla. If his finances is a problem, you need to get up and bounce too. Like, I feel like you guys could work if you guys are willing to compromise and think, talk things through. But at the same time, Gil and Mirla, you probably you guys weren't meant to be together anyway. So you guys probably just need to let things go. Um... But I don't feel like Mirla shits on people necessarily. Uh, the way she talks, like especially in the beginning of the season, from what they showed us, like I don't know if she's still doing what she was doing in the beginning of this uh, season, at what she's doing now, because that's not what the producers are showing. But from I can only go based off what the producers show, that it seems like she has gotten better uh, at her little complaining and stuff, and she's kind of. I don't even know. what I always never know what the word is when I'm doing my review. But then after, when I replay my review, I'm like, ah, that's what I meant to say. But it seems like she's more aware of when she's about to complain or complaining. So it seems like she kind of stepped back from that, in my personal opinion. Uh, as far as the bread and spoiled, yeah, she is. And that's why I'm just like, I can't, I can't deal with that. Because she seems like the type of friend who's just going to be like, I'm going to say what I have to say. And that's going to be it. And if you guys feel some type of way, oh, well, let it be. Talking about, oh, I don't want you to do my eyebrows like them. And that's her friends. I'll be like, bitch, fuck you and your eyebrows and your stupid long ass false eyelashes. That one would look real. Them things look fake, girl. And they don't look good on your face. So, <laughs> listen, like I said, me and her can't be friends. But... I don't think she necessarily shits on people because she says she gives back to the community and all, that, and all that stuff. She just likes to spend money on expensive things. And at this point, like I said, I can't say nothing because she got the money for it. She pays off her credit card. She got more savings than you, Gil. So why are we still talking about this? Why is this still an issue? But like I said, we'll get to that part when he talks with his mama. So everyone comes together before decision day to chill. So they chill, eat, drink, play pool, whatever. And they talk about the reasons to say yes or no on decision day. I'm not going to go through what each couple said word for word. Um, Rachel and Jose go first. Gil talking about if wifey doesn't change, then he'd say no. And then Ryan trying to instigate the shit and talking about, oh, Marilyn needs a rebuttal. She needs a rebuttal. So Marilyn done said if she can't shop, then she'd say no. Okay, whatever. Then Brett and Ryan goes next. Brett says something. I don't remember what she said. Ryan saying, uh, he was saying something too. I didn't say, I didn't write what he said, but I just noted the fact that when he was talking, Brett just looking at him like so annoyed and like 
over like nigga please bye so i kind of laughed at that then johnny Bow says something johnny seemed kind of optimistic and i'm like why johnny i'm not doing this with you no more then Bow talks good about johnny that johnny challenged her and you know made her be a better person and blah 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 john johnny making these little smirks and stuff like oh she talking good about me like oh wow i am doing right like no johnny you ain't shit Johnny, you still ain't shit. Shut up. Um, Jack says, I said Jack, Zach says that just because you say yes on decision day doesn't mean you're going to make it. And just because you say no on decision day doesn't mean you can't make it. Bow's just like, nah, man. If, if you say no on decision day, I'm done. You know, it takes two to make a marriage, two to continue a marriage, but only one person to say no to a marriage. So if you say no, I'm done. I'm not going to try to fight. Like, if we get a divorce, that's it. Ain't no coming back from this thing, bitch. So I guess that's when, no, Zach kind of challenged that. Then Michaela stepped in and put a little two cents thing. She understands what Bao is saying because she that's how she thought in the beginning. But now, you know, she can also understand where what um, Zach is saying. And I think even Brett trying to say yes or no to, I think, Bauer, McKay. I don't know. At this point, I'm just like, what is decision day? I'm ready for, for the end of this because this is, this is, this is ridiculous. Uh, Johnny saying his damn confessional that, you know, he doesn't agree with Bauer that if things are absolute, that it's done, but he understands where she's coming from and he has a lot to think about. Yes. Er, yes, Johnny, everybody. All 10 of y'all got a lot to think about. And I hope y'all thinking about reasons or how nicely you're going to say no on decision day. Because I, I'm done. I'm done. So, it goes to commercial comeback. The, they all toast and whatnot. Gil, you know, the spokesman for season 13, asks, what did everyone learn about themselves? They everybody go through the list, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, Johnny realizes that he's an emotional wreck. Nigga, we could have told you that. Uh, Zach realizes that he cries a lot. Nigga, we could have told you that. Uh, we move on. Gil calls his mom. Jill, Gil, Gil, Jill. And he Gil says, like, he's okay with Marilla doing what she wants financially and whatnot. But as long as she don't change who he is, then he's fine with that. And I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? Because this whole season... You've been talking so much shit about her spending money and how she's a princess and all that stuff. So, and it doesn't seem like she tried to change you from what I've seen on camera. So, is, is something else happening off camera, Gil? Because what you're saying here is not making sense. you saying you hope she don't change you, but in actuality, it seems like you're trying to change her. Make it make sense, Gil. Um, he lets us know that Marilyn is old-fashioned. That she wants the guy to pay all the bills. And that's how Gil was raised too. His dad always paid all the bills for his mom. Just as Marilla's dad always paid all the bills for her mom. However, Marilla, Marilla makes like twice as much as him. So for him, he doesn't see it as fair. It's like, I'm paying all these bills, but I wouldn't have no money left. Especially with the what Marilla likes is more expensive than Gil can afford. And that's why me as well as a lot of other reviewers were saying I don't that we don't think Gil necessarily doesn't want the lavish lifestyle. He just can't afford the lavish lifestyle. So Marilyn wants him to pay all the bills. But if you if Marilyn wants to live in a high rise and all that stuff that costs so much money, Gil can't afford it. So if he gonna pay all his bills, all the bills, he gonna be left broke while Marilyn just still shopping and stuff. So I think that's where he's coming from with the okay, like he's still gonna be spending money because, you know, can you help a nigga out? But so if if that's the case in Miller, you know you make more to him, then no, I personally don't think that he should be the one paying all the bills. I think it should be something that they just go, you know, even 50-50 on, I think will take a huge load off of Gil. So that's something that they would have to work on. And the mom even mentioned that, like, come on, y'all need to communicate. She's like, you need to respect her and communicate with her. And that communication is the most important thing in a marriage. And I agree. Communication is a big one. And that's the thing a lot of people, I feel, in relationships have a trouble on, communication. So, Gil doesn't know what he's going to do, 
But he also doesn't like that she's a complainer either. And I'm just like, yo, it just seems like you don't need to be with this woman. And Marilla, it just seems like you don't need to be with this man. Like, it could work. It could if you guys kind of let bygones be bygones and kind of try to come together and compromise. But the way y'all both talking, it seems like y'all don't, y'all both don't want to change. So y'all just don't need to be together. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't, if you don't need to be together, you don't need to be together. That's bottom line. So I think that's it with them. I think I'm just going to move on. So we move on to Johnny and Bao. They have a dinner. You know, I called her this moment. I called her Bling Bing Bao because she was blinging and she calls herself Bing Bao. So she was blinging from her dress to her shoes. Johnny looked like he liked it. He looked mesmerized and shit. And he's just like, oh, wow, you look great and stuff. Pulling her chair off or whatever. And I'm just like, Johnny, please, I don't, I don't want to see all this. I don't, you know, it seemed like he kind of changing his mind. So, Bao starts off saying there was there's a lot of ups and, you know, some downs, but none of that would be a deal breaker for her. And I'm like, are you serious right now? You know what, Bao? I'm not going to say nothing because, listen, I wouldn't do it, but, you know, you're going to do whatever you want, you know, go off, I guess. But um, Johnny said that his friends has him thinking that this could still work between them. And I'm like, I don't know why, like, no, like, Johnny, just let it go. But... He's saying, seeing how she grew up and, you know, how her parents were, you know, really made him think differently about her. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening right now? What What is going on? What the fuck is happening right now? So he's saying in the back of his head, he's still thinking about what Sarah said. That's going to stay in the back of his head for right now. But he, Johnny's just going to take down all his walls and, you know, just try to see where this goes. And he looks like he's about to cry. Bow happy. She's smiling and shit. And I'm just like, y'all, y'all really not finna have, no. No. Not okay. As uh, Dr. Viviana said, when Kristen Page said they were going to continue working things out. No, this is not okay. Bow, I'm going to need you to watch the episode. When you done said, you're not going to take this shit no more. But you keep, you look like you look like, you look like you still want to take this. I don't understand. The couples get together uh, for their last night together before decision day, except for Zach, Michaela, Brett, and Ryan. Uh, Rachel said there's a lot she needs to think about. Mirla, Gil, and Gil they said they're gonna miss each other, and Mirla has no regrets of what happened thus far, and Mirla doesn't know what she's gonna do. Johnny and Bao sit on the couch together in their PJs and uh, talk a little bit. Uh, Bao tears up in the confessional as she's getting ready for bed. And uh, she doesn't know what their, their decision day is going to be like. Johnny is brushing, well, try to brush his teeth in the bathroom. But it looked like his electric toothbrush done died. So he had a backup and whatnot. And, um... When he got in the bed, I'm just looking at the guest bed. I'm like, dang, this guest bed is really small. It's like extremely small. But he could fit in it because he's skinny. I wouldn't. Technically, I would, technically. But it ain't going to be comfortable for me. I need space. I need space. But um, in my head, I was thinking, well, not even in my head because I told my husband this. I'm just like, listen, I bet you if... It was the middle of the night, and Bao got up from her bed, went over to the guest room to to go to Johnny's room and go in his bed and be like, Johnny, I need you right now. Take it. Take me. I bet you he would not only take that puss, but he would be like, okay, I think we can make this work because that would be an ounce of showing like she needs him or whatnot. And that's, his, that's what he wants. I'm like, that's that's probably what will make him say yes in a heartbeat to decision day. But I'm just like, I'm done with these two anyway, man, whatever. So the couples, is the next day, you know, it's, it's the day before decision day. And the couples are getting up to, you know, depart from each other before. Because, you know, they can't see each other the day before decision day. Kind of, kind of like marriage, getting married and whatnot. And Ryan comes to the apartment to apologize to Brett. For the whole dating app situation. And he didn't even really apologize. He just like. Says oh, I didn't mean to, to hurt you. Or do that to you. Whatever. I guess Brett's going to take it for what it is. And she appreciates it. Appreciates it. 
they hug and he leaves and you know brett's just over it ryan's over it they both won't say no on decision day they both probably have come to terms with that already but you know just gonna show face just to be on camera at this point um everyone does their confessional talking about what they're gonna do or they don't know what they're gonna do for decision they like everybody like you know this is at this point what they're saying is going through one ear of minds and out the other ear of minds because i'm just like yeah everybody don't know what they're gonna do but yet everybody probably knows what they're gonna okay what whatever what whatever okay next we gonna be decision day and then ho you know hopefully it's only one episode for the season for, uh not season finale but for the reunion uh the only thing i took from the previews for next week gil gonna let us know that they had sex him and Mirla has sex. Mirla looking at him like, are you serious right now? Like, you telling everybody this? Mirla, we're not surprised. Um, a lot of reviewers done said that you guys probably already had sex, you know. But I'm just like, uh, I'm just going to wait for them to admit that. But I'm not surprised because, you know, y'all y'all touchy feelings. You know, I'm not surprised. You went from like, no, I'm not going to touch you. Like, you can kiss me on the cheek. Like, no, nah, I ain't going to do all that to just, you know being very uh touchy feely and hugging and all that stuff so all right that's cool that's cute whatever at least you know y'all both got y'all rocks off and whatnot um and the only other thing i took was speaking of Mirla and gail Mirla, that that makeup for decision day was horrendous okay you talking about you don't want your front your eyebrows like your friend's eyebrows but i don't want my eyeshadow like your eyeshadow that makeup was horrendous but that's where it ends guys you know i'm surprised i got through 36 minutes i thought it was gonna be like 15 minutes but you know i you know i try i i, <laughs> I try but thank you guys so much for watching we're gonna see what happened uh next week decision day they better all say no but i know at least one couple's gonna say yes so we will see next week what happens? Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.